Good morning. Uh, we're going to be looking at what we can do with a graph data structure today. We have some sample code up here on the board. We're going to be taking a look at some other code to go along with it to review the implementation of how we can actually use a graph data structure. So for sample code right here, as you can see, we're using a, a graph of type string called connect word and connect words, excuse me. And we have a series of uh, statements to go along with this. As you can see right here, we have a series of statements we're adding to the graph itself by adding a vertex. And we have some lovely uh, edges we're going to connect as well going through this. Over here on the other side of the board, we have our graph data array as well as our adjacency matrix 2D array of Boolean types. And we're going to use that to actually go through and put that together. So let's go ahead and take a look at seeing what we need to do to actually put the structure together and see what happens as we do that. And so we also have a space over here we're going to actually build our graph right here so we can see what happens when the connections themselves are made when we add the actual nodes to this. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So the first thing we're going to do to create is a graph of type string called connected word. Okay, here we have a lovely graph of string connected word. So okay, and with that graph of string, we have a Boolean 2D array as well as a graph data array of type. This is going to hold strings inside here. And so these two data components come with this. We're going to be using that to actually go through and put this together. So taking a look over here, first step we have is connect words .add vertex. And the connect words .add vertex is how we add a value into the actual graph itself. We're going to add a vertex to this. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab that. And so the first process that we have to do is we have to make sure that we're not at maximum. Since we're, we're not there, we're totally cool. So that's good to go. Then we create a new in, a vertex number, which is our vertex count. Since we have nothing in here, our vertex count to start off with, so vertex count right now is zero. Oh, fantastic. We'll make a new int uh, called new vertex number called, and it's a zero. Okay. And so I'm going to have a vertex right here, and it's zero. Okay. So I have my vertex right here, zero. It's, it's amazing. There's, there's nothing really much in it. And I'm going to go through it and go to my adjacency matrix. And using that original vertex count and my new vertex count right here, I have to make sure my vertex count goes up by one, so now one. So I'm going to go from zero, not including one, and zero, not including one right here. I'm going to set that to both locations to be false. So zero, sub zero is false. And zero, sub zero is also false. There's only one right there right now, so no big deal. And then once I do that, my next step is to actually add my lovely vertex, the data that's stored inside it. In this case, we have computer science. So the computer science string needs to be added to our graph data array. So we're going to go over here to our graph data array, and in spot zero, we're going to type in CS. And so we have CS inside our graph data array, and that's our first step. Boom, we're done. Okay, we're going to repeat that process. We're add some more vertices to this, and we're going to add, add vertex data structures. So my vertex count went up to one at that point, because we um, plus plus it, because it gets plus plus each time we go through. And so now I'm going to go to my vertex one and draw that. And its number is one. Okay, fantastic. So my one vertex. Notice on my graph right here, there's no relationship yet between the actual two values. There's simply just vertices that exist. They have no edges connecting them. They're just points. Okay, no worries. So now the next spot, our vertex is going to start off at zero. And we're gonna, for other vertex, that variable we're going to use for that. And we're going to go vertex is less than um, our vertex count, which is now two, because we plus plus it because we add that new one in. And we're going to start off with some adjacency matrix, and we're going to use sub zero for our first part, our vertex count right here, or the vertex number, which is our row indices, so zero, and one, but not less than two, and we're going to set that to be false, okay, false. And we also need to make sure that we have the matching corresponding spot right here of sub one, sub one, also going in there, because we want to make sure we have that all the way through, because we have to have that go up one each time. So we want to make sure we have both this spot, this spot, and its corresponding diagonal also maintained to be false, because we have a no idea what that default value is ready to go. And since we're using a directed graph, we can't assume they can talk to themselves. Yeah, no biggie. Okay, so our next stop right here, we're going to go connected words that add vertex. C++ has pointers. So our vertex count was two, so I'm going to add a new one right here. And make a new node, it's two. Vertex count goes up to three. And I have up here, I have my data structures. I have to put that in. I'm going to go over here, and so I'm going to go 0 to 2. Okay, fantastic. So that's false. And then 1 to 2, that's also false. And then 0 to 2, that's false. And 1 to 2 is false. And 2 to 2 is also false. So we have those values that are going right in there. 
Okay, fantastic. We're good to go. So we're now at a graph data where I have that new third one. So we're going to have C++, so C++ pointers. Okay, so we have that value added right in there. We're good to go. We're going to do that same thing again with the three as our node. We add that in. We change this up here to be four because of our plus plus. We keep track of that value. We're going to go over here and we're going to go up to less than four. We're going to start off with other vertex number. Or okay, our row zero sub new vertex number is going to go through. Um, so row zero up to um, so zero four is false. So zero less than four, false. One is less than four, false. Sub two less than four, false. Sub three is less than four, false. And then we have columns. So we have the same starting up here at this at zero. And we have that at false for our other vertex number. And our new vertex number for our value, new vertex number is that. And matching those values all the way across. Bing, bing, bing. We've got those lovely values going over. Okay. Matching those all up, all the way across, we have that lovely set of false values. We go ahead and add that fourth one in there. Boom, boom, boom. We are now at Java Rocks. Repeat that process again for Swift is Nifty. So we're going to move this up here for spot four. So add a node. Swift is Nifty. This becomes five. We're going to go over here and starting off at other vertex number at zero. So row zero, column four is false. And four zero is false. And go up to one, and we have false, false, and false, false, and false, false, and four four is also false, false. We have that all the way going across that lovely L shape reverse going through on all those values. Fantastic. We go ahead and add this point so where we have our Swift is nifty, and we have that on there. And the last one, we have the selector operator over here. We're going to put the selector operator, and that's going to become five. That goes to six. Repeat that process again with false, 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 false. Ready to go. No big deal. And a last one right there. We have our six, our last location. We're putting that in. Excuse me, spell that right. Six. Put that on there. Our vertex count goes up to seven. And we repeat this whole system again, putting those all. All those values in that 2D array booleans are now all filled with false by default. So our adjacency matrix, nothing is connected to anything. We're good to go. So we've gone through and we've done all of that lovely add vertex lines. So this first chunk of code, we've gone through and done all of that. And so now we have to go ahead and add some edges to that. So we're going to make some connections between that. And so we have some different connections we're going to make. And so we have our source and our target, our parameters. And so that's what we're going to use as our, uh, to actually put this together. So we have in our add edge method, we have add edge connecting between node 0 and 1. So we're going to have a lovely directed line going from 0 to 1, like that. And so 0 is going to have a connection to 1. Now, we're using a directed graph for this, which means it's a one-way graph, not a two-way graph for that. So we're going to go ahead and go over here. We're going to find that lovely connection for our add vertex, or excuse me, for our add edge. And I'm going to go and find that source as the row. So in this case, 0, row 0, and connection 1, target 1. And we're going to change that false value. We're going to erase that out of there and replace it with a true. And so we now have a true connection. And we'll do that with a lovely blue highlighter on it. So we can see we've made that connection right here. That's still false. OK, so we have that lovely true connection. We, made, we add an edge now connecting row 0 to 1. That's the only connection change that makes on that. Now, of course, when we're doing that, we have to make sure, of course, that that value is actually valid. But, you know, I built this. We're good to go. Okay? We're going to make a new connection now between 0 2. So, again, we're going to go over here. We have a 0 2. We're going to line down from 0 down to 2. And so, if we look at the connection right here, we have computer science links to data structures and computer science links to C++ pointers. So, we have a connection that we're building between that. So, we're going to go ahead, go over here to row 0, column 2, replace that false value with a true. And so we've changed that adjacency matrix to match that. So we have the idea that we're just building on with that. So we now have two connections on here. Repeat that again on 0, 3. And again, we have that lovely connection right here, 0 down to 3. And so we have that connection in our graph. So we have four that are connected over here inside our actual graph, our visual representation of the graph. We have four nodes that are all connected with this. 
But if we actually, let's say four nodes were connected right this. But if you notice right here, our four, five, and six nodes are not connected at all because they're simply just nodes that exist and we have to find, make a connection for them. So if we look at the next sequence right there, we're going to take an edge between zero to four. So we're going to go ahead and draw a line from zero to four using a directed add right here. And again, with that structure, we have that connection going from zero to four. So I'm going to go up here and replace that value, zero to four. That is also going to be true. So we have a connection now on zero to nodes one, two, three, and four. But notice there is not a matching or corresponding connection from node one to zero, two to zero, three to zero, or four to zero. None of those connections exist. This is a one-way directed graph that we're using for that. So we've got those lines right there. So those edges have been connected. We have a directed set of edges. We're going to make a new connection right here on and add an undirected connection on nodes two to six. So node two is going to talk to six, and we're going to use a special connection. We're going to use a both way, an undirected connection, so that they both see each other for that. As you can see, I downline that in purple right here. So both of that. So I'm going to go over to row two, column six, and set that to become true. And then I'm going to go to over to column six, row two, column six, and as well as row six, column two, right here, and make that one also be true. So we have a connection now that goes between both directions. So now the only one that's not talking anything is five. Five's all by its lonesome. We'll check that again as well right here. As we're going to add a new edge right here, an undirected edge between four and five. And so we have an undirected graph of connection between four and five. So we're going to go over here to row four, column five, this location, and row four, five, we'll change that to be true. And then its inverse is also going to be true, so I'm going to go to row five, column four, right here, and make that one be true. And so we have a, both directions can communicate back and forth between that. And so what we see right here within this, and that's also the pointer operator for that one, is we have a relationship right now between two and six. So C++ has a relationship between the dereference operator and that we have over here on four and five, Swift has a reference to the return operator. And so we have a re relationship that goes back and forth between those two right there for that one. These two have a relationship back and forth, and computer science links to all of those. So we have an actual graph that we've built right here for this. We're going to continue on with this. We're going to make it so we can actually see what's going to happen. We do a traversal of this. We can see what happens with that traversal. And so we're going to go ahead and pause right here and get to the next piece.